Hi and welcome to Intection. Today we're going to be looking at the Bash Bunny. This is a really cool tool uh, for hackers and cyber uh, um, ethical hackers. Um, this is effectively a Linux computer on a memory stick. Um, it comes from a company called uh, Hack5 and it is a quad-core ARM Cortex computer running a full copy of Linux. Now what's really cool about this device, it also has um, a three position switch on the side, which I'll talk about in a moment, and an LED which you can program as well, a uh, multicolored LED. Uh, now you may ask yourself, what would you use one of these for? Uh, apart from obviously if you have nefarious uh, reasons, but you can of course use this if you are you operate in the cyber security arena. Now, let's talk through how the device works. So the device itself, as I said, has a full copy of Linux on this. Uh, and, and effectively, anything you can do in Bash, um, you can do on this device. And you can update it and install and expand it in the future. Um, you can, of course, use, uh, you can select different payloads on this device by using the switch. And this three position switch has uh, the position nearest the front nearest the USB stick uh, is the army mode. In essence, it enables you to connect to the device and it's not delivering any payloads. And you can connect to the device simply by creating your scripting files and dropping them into a special directory structure that's on the device. Very easy to use, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and the, you can also connect the device uh, by other means because it's not just a USB storage device. This, div this uh, computer can um, program itself to emulate most devices. So, for example, it can be an Ethernet device. It can be a keyboard. It can be an Ethernet device and a keyboard. It can be an Ethernet device and a storage device. It can be uh, a serial device. So the options are endless. And you can also change the device ID. So it's not a generic device. If you know a company is using Apple uh, computers, you can make it look like an Apple keyboard, that kind of thing. So, and because it has the full power of Linux running, it of course can do a lot more. Now this is a recent, uh, a recent, um, uh, it's recently created, so there's still uh, only a few payloads, as we call them, available for this. Um, but it's expanding quickly. So this switch also, if you move it back to the first position, this switch it operates a payload when in that position. And that's payload one, and that is payload two. Let's show you how you use this. So first of all, let's um, switch this into arming mode. And I'm going to plug this into my computer. And once the power is applied, you will see that this device comes on. And once you get to this flashing blue light, um, you can see that it's now opened up on, on the screen. And we now have a, uh, a view of the um, computer's this computer on here it's local storage now it's not showing you everything it's showing you a position a petition that's available for us to work with so um, by default you get a payload directory um, you have a directory which relates to the switch that I described earlier switch one and switch two uh, and you put your payload in there and it's a simple file which I'll explain in a moment and also you have a library uh, and this library of possible um, uh, payloads uh, is expanding all the time. You can download them from GitHub. Uh, and of course, you can create your own. And just to show you this, I'm going to show you one that's designed for Windows 7 that I create. And I'll show you how easy it is to, um, to use. So what we'll do, first of all, let's find a, a spare switch. So I think switch two. Yeah. So, OK. So there is a there is a if we go into library, and if we go to um, uh, fake, if I can find it, uh, there we go. 
So if we go to fake Win 7 update, now this is a Windows 10 machine and this payload is designed for Windows 7. Um, and all I do is I take this code and I will copy it in, but I'll quickly show you what the how the code works and then we'll show you uh, then we we'll show it working afterwards. So um, this is just a readme file, so we'll ignore that. Um, now this text file is the payload. Now if we look in here. The way, way it works, as you can see, for people who are Linux uh, people, this is a bash file and it has its own scripting language. In fact, it has a number of scripting languages and it can use a, another language uh, called DuckyScript uh, and you can mix and match. So if we work through this, and I used a website to generate this. Um, so first thing you do, anything with a hash in front of it, um, a pound sign, for the Americans uh, is not going to run, it's just a remark. So if we look at this, we have um, the attack mode is set as a HID, which is, stands for Human Interface Device. And then we then set the LED on the device, which is down here, to green and to flash every one thousandth uh, of a second. And then if you look, um, the next thing is we set the keyboard language to UK. And then here, uh, what we're doing is we, we are telling it to use the quack language, which is for ducky script, which is uh, for a rubber ducky. And then look in the current switch position, as in whatever was armed. Uh, and then run a file called ducky underscore code. And then when that is completed running that file, it will then set the uh, LED to green and it'll be constantly on green. So if we come out of that, that's what it does. So if we now look in the ducky code, the ducky code is really simple. Uh, um, you can do a lot more than we, we, are, we are here. Um, and this is compatible with a rubber ducky as well. Um, so the first thing is GUI R, which is the same as pressing the Windows key on a Windows machine and the letter R, which gives you the run box. So that's what the first line is. The second line is delay for 500th of a second. And then in the run box, it's going to type I, I explore and this URL. So it's going to bring up Internet Explorer and load that URL. And then it will press enter. And then after that, it will wait 500 milliseconds and then it would press F11. Now, the, the F11 piece won't work on a Windows 10 machine, but I don't have a Windows 7 virtual machine to show you. But I can assure you this works very well on a Windows 7 machine. And if you do want to prank people, you could go to fakeupdate.net and you can swap. Uh, there's different files there for different things, but you'll see what it does in a moment. So that effectively is a really basic ducky script. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy these um, these files that are in this directory. So we will copy them. It says me, you can't learn how to use copy. Let's do this. We're going to copy them, and I'm going to put them in the library in the whoops in the payloads directory. And we're going to put them in switch two, uh, which I don't mind using. So I'm going to overwrite what's in there. Okay, so we replace the destination. Okay, so actually this readme file uh, doesn't need to be used, but it's just convenient to know. Uh, it's just convenient to have the readme file uh, available. Uh, and you can create these to explain what will happen. Starting will go green, a thousand seconds, and ending will be green, that kind of thing. So, so now, just to use it, all you need to do is make sure that you eject your bash bunny, which we're going to do now. And the bash bunny is currently in use, so it's now happy. So we now eject it which we've done. And now what we're going to do is switch this to switch two, which is the middle position. And if we now, I'll just clear the screen from this so you can see what's going on. Let's move this down out of the way. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is plug this in and we can see what it does. So again, this won't go full screen because Microsoft Edge currently doesn't support the F11 key, um, which is unusual, but that's a different story. But you'll get an idea. As you can see, it fired everything up. And this is a, oh, and it has gone full screen. So that's new. So there we go. So we now have a fake Windows 7 professional uh, screen. Uh, and it is a fake screen. It's just a video and this will carry on going. And what's really nice on that website is if I press the enter key, it will come up with a blue screen. And of course it isn't really a blue screen of death. It looks like it is, but it isn't because you can see we've got a mouse and it's all, all there. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see at the top, we have Internet Explorer running up there. So that's how you can fake someone so that's pretty cool so that's that's basically uh part of what a rubber ducky a very base level can do so i'm going to show you one other thing which is really cool is how to steal credentials from the lock machine so what we're going to do now is i'm going to eject the bash bunny again so we just make sure uh it shouldn't have a it shouldn't appear as a disc because i didn't enable it as a disc i enabled it as a a hid mode as you can see it's not on the left so what we do now is I will eject the bash bunny uh, I'm going to now switch it back into army mode and um, what we'll do now is we we will now select a different payload so just waiting for that to power up so there we go so this is now and we're not as you can see we now have access again to the device so I'm going to show you now how to run something called Quick Creds. Now, Quick Creds is a an interesting uh, tool. So, and again, I haven't tried it on this, so it'll be interesting to see it working. So, this is the payload. It's far more. It, it will look really simple because it's actually doing. It's using a tool. So, this is written by a, a chap called Mubix. Uh, incredibly clever. So, it doesn't really look like much to see so let's format that word wrap as you can see it's really better if we had notepad plus but we we'll leave that for now okay so doesn't look very much however if we actually run this so what i'm going to do now is i've already got quick creds already loaded in switch one which should be if i haven't let's, let's put it in there Let's go back to library and then let's go to quick creds. And what we do is we just copy these two and we will put them into switch one. Again, you only actually need one of the files and we replace. So now we've we've done that, what we need to do is to eject the bunny again. And we'll show you this working. Uh, and let's hope, let's go try again. There we go. So we now have that out. So that's now disconnected. So uh, let's run it with the machine running. So the first, what we're going to do now is we'll eject it. I remember it's switch, it's switch one we need to connect to now. So if I switch this into one and then plug that in, now we shall wait and see. So what this will do now is it's going to present itself as a um, network interface and it will bring up a number of services on the device. Uh, so the setup was the red light and these services will pretend to be an internet um sorry uh, a network device now windows likes to share a lot of information over the network uh and um, and unfortunately it does this behind the scenes while you're working and what this does this tool now this quick cred is attempting to gather as much information as it can from uh the pc uh by pretending to be a network so we'll, we'll wait for this to finish. So it's finished now, actually. So it just took a little bit longer than I planned. So the green is it's finished. I thought it wasn't working, but it's, it's done its job. 
Um, so what we can do now is it should have finished and mm, turned itself from a network device uh, to also now having a um, disk. So we should see a bash bunny appear here. Can't see it though. No. I can't see the bash bunny on here. So what we do is we will just make sure we can disconnect this safely. That's cool. We're okay there. We'll disconnect. Okay. So let's see whether we did get anything. Again, this is a live demo and we have a, a fun way of not always getting these right. So I've now switched it into army mode and we should now have access to the local disk. So we'll just wait for it to come up. There we go. It's just coming up now. We should see the local disk. Now in the loot directory, you'll have quick creds now, which wasn't there before. So that's positive. And then in there, we have the name of this machine, which I think is this one. Nope, it's this machine. Nope. Ah, there we go. Let's just check it is the right one. Uh, for date and time. Okay, so if we have a look through here, I think it's going to be the proxy. So these, I won't show you them all because some of these will be real but uh, those are my, uh, I will, in fact, I'll blur them out, but they are the credentials, cookies, and so forth, as you can see, of everything going in and out of this machine. So that's a bit worrying, really, isn't it? just to show you. So, wow. What I'm going to do now is um, show you that this truly is a Linux machine. So as it's a Linux machine, let's just show you, it's, it's um, if we go into PuTTY, which I can't see, and what I'm gonna do is connect via the serial port. Now to know which serial port we have, we need to go into Device Manager, uh, and then uh, we need to go to Ports, and we've got a USB serial device on COM4, so that's what you need to remember. So we change that to COM4, and then we're going to change the speed, although it would work, to 115200, uh, and then we're going to connect. And now we get a login for the Bash Bunny, uh, and so we log in as root, and we're also going to use the default password, which is hack5bunny, if I can type. Okay, so as you can see, we're now on the, on the, on the bash bunny, and just to prove it's Linux, if we ls it, uh, as you can see, I can also go back to uh, the root, if I can find the key on here. Uh, oops. Uh, me guessing it once. So as you can see, we have uh, a complete file system. So you can do anything with the standard app get commands, uh, and you can install Linux. Uh, sorry, you can install any additional applications in here. So that's just to prove it is truly a Linux machine. You don't have to connect over serial port. You can connect over SSH, etc and you can route your internet traffic into this device as well if you want it to have internet access. Anyway, I think that's probably about enough for now, but just to show you where you can get more information, if we, at the end, go to the bashbunny.com, which can be is wiki.bashbunny.com, and there's an index, and you can, you can read all about this device. As you can see, you can you can set it up as all sorts of combinations. Uh, you can do very clever things. Um, I'm not going to go through any more today, but but you can do a lot. And it tells you how to use this. And then there, there's a whole a forum which you can go through. And the forum has a lot of help and assistance on how to use um, how to use the Bash Bunny. Uh, and then of course, if I go back again. Um, payloads. If we go to the payloads, they're all on GitHub and these are updated all of the time. 
and you can see it's as a library here and to get a new payroll a payload onto your machine you li you literally um, come to the pay come to the github clone or download so you could download it as a zip and that will give you a zip of all of this and then you replace it on your local machine and there are also some payloads that you can put on uh, which will automatically uh, keep these up to date but there we go so that is the bash bunny so thank you very much for watching and please uh, subscribe and uh, and look forward to seeing you soon thank you